So I'm here today with Dr. Gavin McGregor Skinner, a director of GBAC. Uh, you know, we've had some good news lately. We've had uh, these new vaccines coming out. Everyone's excited. Uh, people are happy to see that this virus might be controlled, this coronavirus. And now, a couple of days ago, we started hearing about a mutated virus, a version of it in England. And so they're trying to contain it in England. But now I wake up this morning, it's in Denmark, Belgium, the Netherlands, Italy, Australia. Dr. Anthony Fauci says it's probably in the U.S. Yes, so Jeff. what's going on? Yes, Jeff, this is really important. Um, this new variant strain of SARS-CoV-2 virus, the virus that causes COVID-19, has been known about in Southeast England since September of this year. Now, this virus mutates all the time. And this mutation has been known in Southeast England, but what's just happened recently, it's become highly prevalent. It's become the, the number one virus in London and Southeast England. Uh, just last week, six out of every 10 person, persons in London that were diagnosed with COVID-19 had this mutation, mutation strain. And what's really important is that we've now seen this, as you've correctly said, this mutated strain of, uh, of SARS-CoV-2 virus spread to other countries. There's still a lot we don't know. Uh, there's some things we're worried about. Uh, and we're also thinking, is it more rapidly transmissible? All this work's being done right now, but this has now become the most prevalent uh, virus, strain of this virus in London, and is now spreading to other countries. Yeah, everyone was hoping it would stay you know, in one location where they could contain it, but it's, it's out. Um, I saw a number that said 70% faster infectious rate. I, I got to say, that's a scary number. It is. It is a very scary number for a couple of reasons, is that we're still not sure. Uh, we know that the, the mutation occurred on the spike protein. This is the, the part of the virus that attaches to our cells, uh, our cells in our body. Uh, we know that if it, it, if it does increase transmission by 70%, that means the number of cases will double every six to seven days. There's also a mutation there called the N501Y part of the, this protein. And that what we do know about this, this spike protein at position 501 is that it binds more tightly to the cell, which means it may be easy to be infected. There's still questions that we don't know, but still, but still uh, theoretically right now, we know that the N501Y part of the mutation makes it stick better to our cells. There's still a lot to be learned here though. Okay. So I have a lot of questions. Uh, this, there's a new strain of virus, 70% faster infectious rate. Does it have a name? Is it, is it COVID-20? Well, that's a good question. So we, it possibly it, it, it spreads faster. We're still gonna learn this, but theoretically looking at the genomic sequencing or the fingerprint, yes, it does. Yes, it had a name and it, it was called uh, a name that you know, it would mean nothing to us. It was the first variant under investigation and it had this long name. Then that name was just shortened just yesterday to B117. And when I saw this, oh, the stealth fighter, that's a bad name because, so what you'll see in the press now, you'll see terms like variant, strain, lineage, or mutant, and they're all being used interchangeably, but they all mean the same thing, that this virus has mutated like it does all the time. And most of the time, these mutations just disappear. They don't stay. Now, this virus has actually become stronger and has spread more geographically. And that's why we're so, so concerned. So you'll see this this term B117 being used now in the press. Okay, so why the UK? Why, why did it happen there? This is a good question. So we knew this about this new mutation strain back in September of 2020. It was really in the Southeast of England, uh, in the County of Essex. It was thought, it hasn't been confirmed, thought that it was linked to young people having dance parties, raves. And what we've now seen, and this is just in the last week, that 60% of all the recent infections and recent infections in London of COVID-19 have this variant, has this muta mutation. And so that's where we're concerned. It emerged in the UK. Why did it emerge in the UK? We don't know. By chance, again, these viral uh, variants emerge all the time and they disappear. We saw one in Singapore this year emerge and then disappear. Um, we've also got another one in South Africa that has emerged that is completely a complete different mutation than the one we're seeing in, in the UK. But again, what we're seeing now is that we're looking very closely at the, the characteristics of the various variant strain and understanding whether it causes more illness, more death, we don't know, more transmissibility, easy to catch, we don't know. Still a lot to be learned, still a lot, a lot of studies to be done. So Gavin, this mutation um, originated in England, the UK, and here we are in the States, many people. 
Um, how about air traffic? Has has there been enough air traffic where we should be concerned about it being here? That's a really good question, Jeff, because what the knee jerk reaction we've seen from many countries is they've stopped the flights. Mm -hmm. And I think we've got to look at this realistically. And I was just looking at some data this morning provided by the air from the airlines for America. They're an industry advocate group. Now they released information just recently that said the total number of passengers that came from London Heathrow airport to the United States in November, 2020, last month alone, just from London Heathrow was over 30,000. That doesn't include the other airports in England and Europe, just from London Heathrow came to. So right now, this is the big gap in the United States surveillance program. The UK, they do this genomic sequencing, this, this fingerprinting, they do it on about 8% of all the known cases they've had. In the US, we've only done this on 0.3% of the 18 million known COVID cases, we've only done the genomic sequencing or the fingerprint on 0.3%. What does that mean in real numbers? The UK has genomic sequenced 125,000 cases of the virus. The US has only sequenced 51,000. So we are well beyond. We, there are 44 countries in the world that are doing more work, more sequencing than the US. We are. And so the US government is putting together a new system, a new program that won't be ready until January to do more sequencing because that's the only way you can find mutations in this virus. What about other um, mutations of this coronavirus? Once this one happens, uh, there's another one pops up in another country that gives us the same scare. Uh, is that possible? Yes, it is. And, and again, we know that the SARS-CoV-2 virus, Jeff, mutates regularly like other viruses. Mm -hmm. like, the flu virus does the same thing. And that's why we have to have, we have to change the flu vaccine every year because of mutations. Now we know the SARS-CoV-2 virus mutates regularly. It acquires about one new mu mutation in its genome about every two weeks. But many of these mutations are silent, but they cause no change in the structure of the proteins. Uh, they produce no change in the virus's behavior. But what we're seeing now with this new mutation in England, we're seeing some mutations. There's actually 23 mutations that happened in this, in this new variant that may change the way the virus behaves. And we're still learning about that. Yeah. So if someone gets a vaccine and they feel pretty safe and then this comes across the, the water to the United States, do they have to wonder, their vac is their vaccine any good? Well, we're very fortunate, Jeff, in this new technology to develop the COVID-19 vaccines. We've used what this technology called mRNA, and we haven't focused on just one part of the virus. It's called a polyclonal vaccine. So it means we're focused on many different parts of the virus. So even though we're seeing 23 changes or mutations in this new variant that's occurred in, in England and now predominantly in London, we know the vaccine will still work on other parts. Again, very early days, much more um, research needs to be done. But there are some, some really serious potential consequences of these mutations I think we should be thinking about. Okay, so implications of this well, emergence. What should we think about as a cleaning industry especially? Well, just from a general public perspective right now, the implications for the emergence of any new mutation, any new variant of the SARS-CoV-2 virus that causes COVID-19 is one, it could have the ability to spread more quickly between people. It could have the ability to cause either milder or more se severe disease in humans. It could have the ability to evade detection by specific diagnostic tests. It could decrease the susceptibility to some of our therapeutic agents, some of our medicines, our treatments that we use, like such as monoclonal antibodies. It could have the ability to evade either the infection induced immunity. Remember when you get infected, you, you produce antibodies which should protect you. It could have the ability to evade that infection induced immunity, but also it could have the ability to evade vaccine induced immunity. But again, we're very lucky that the FDA authorized vaccines are polyclonal and they produce antibodies that target several parts of the spike protein. So right now, again, it's very concerning. We're waiting to see the answers come from the scientists, but these are the possibilities. Now, for the cleaning industry, yeah. I've, I've gone to a number of vaccine clinics in the last week. I've seen a very small number, probably less than five, actual janitorial staff or cleaning staff from hospitals lining up for this vaccine. 
The Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna vaccine are different. The Pfizer vaccine, you give it and then once and then 21 days later, you give the second dose. The Moderna vaccine, you give it today and then four weeks later, 28 days later, you give the second dose. You need two separate plans for those vaccines. The, it's causing, you know, working in a hospital and nursing home on the front lines, this is the hope. This is the excitement. Everyone, is, everyone wants their photo taken. Everyone is clapping and cheering as they get the first dose. What we need to do for the cleaning staff, the janitorial staff, for those frontline essential employees is be good advocates and ensure more of them get to the front line of the vaccine line and get immunized or get, get, get the jab in the arm as soon as possible. And that's going to take a lot of work from people like you and me, Jeff, to keep saying, to be good advocates, to be good ambassadors, to get them in line, to get them vaccinated because they work in very high risk environments. Well, thank you, Gavin. Anything else to add? No, Jeff, we'll wait and see. You're going to see this in the news now for uh, you know, not days, but weeks. Um, again, as the, we start to talk about the emergence of new variants, new mutations, it's, it's real, it happens. Uh, we know that it, we think theoretically at this stage, the vaccine will still work. Science will prove that. But again, we're seeing again, a, a reaction here in the US to do more genomic sequencing because we, we, are, we, have, we're, we have 44 countries ahead of us doing a better job and we need to catch up. All right, thank you for your time today. Thank you.